Hello and welcome to this section of the Chemistry Tutor. Uh, in this section we're going to continue talking about redox reactions. Specifically we're going to talk about writing what we call half reactions for redox reactions. Half reactions. So what this basically means is in the last section we introduced the concept of a redox reaction. We talked about the fact that all redox reactions uh, involve electrons moving around from one thing to another. Something is losing those electrons and something has to be gaining those electrons. And that's the process of oxidation and the process of reduction. Okay? So what we've found though is that even for these simple reactions, see everything we've done so far has been very simple. This plus this yields this. And we can draw with arrows, okay this is losing electrons, okay this is gaining electrons. We can kind of mark up the reaction to show you how the electrons are actually transferred. But that can get cumbersome, it can get messy, and uh, for longer reactions it can be hard to read. Okay, So what we're going to learn how to do is take a redox reaction, like a large redox reaction, and break it up into two smaller electrons, uh, I'm sorry, two smaller reactions. All right. One of those half reactions, that's why we call it half reactions, one of those half reactions involves gaining the electron, and the other half uh, reaction involves losing those electrons. So instead of looking at one giant reaction, where we kind of can visualize where the electrons are going, we can break the redox reactions into half reactions so that we can easily see when the electrons are being lost and then also when the electrons are gained. I really want to make sure and point out to you though that half reactions are uh, just a different way to write the original redox reaction. The original redox reaction is what's really happening. We write these half reactions just to make it a little easier for us to see what's going on, that's all. And we're going to use these half reactions later on when we learn how to balance redox reactions using the methods that we'll learn later. So it's important for you to understand. So in order for us to understand the motivation why we might care about half reactions, let's look at a reaction that I know we've talked about. Okay, so what we're going to have is two times, or two uh, moles of sodium, all right, plus chlorine, which is a diatomic molecule, so that's why there's a two down there. You always have chlorine in a gas form. It's always bound by, to itself. And this would yield 2NaCl, all right? So this is sodium chloride. This is uh, table salt. This is what you sprinkle on your food and what you eat, okay? So you can see that it's balanced. Two sodiums, two sodiums, two chlorines, two chlorines, everything's wonderful. Um, but I guess you might guess that even though you've seen this reaction before and we didn't know that it was a redox reaction before, now that we're learning redox, I can tell you that this is a redox reaction. So something in here is losing electrons and it's being oxidized because it's losing electrons and something is being reduced. So it's gaining those electrons. And both of those processes are happening at the same time when the reaction occurs. So let's see if we can figure out what's being oxidized and what's being reduced. Now, notice that when sodium chloride forms, I'm just gonna kinda put like a little aside out here. When sodium chloride forms, okay, sodium is in the first column of the periodic table. So it wants to be positive, uh, basically positive one. It really wants to be positive one. And chlorine is in that, uh, that next to last column in the periodic table on the right hand side. So using the periodic table rules that we learned before, this guy is always wants to be negative one. So that's how this thing binds up. And you can do the crisscross rule and see that it's, it's one uh, atom of sodium to one atom of chlorine because when you cross it the subscripts are one and one.